Welcome back. Today, we're going to be working on the second part of the Ichigo Kurosaki cosplay build. Last time we made his wig, and this time we are going to be working on, you can't see it, but it's down here, the Hakama, the pants. Uh, and I'm going to be trying to make this as like historically accurate as possible, while also being true to the character. So we might take a little bit of liberty, uh, but we are going to be working off of historical accuracy the best that we can. Now, a lot of what I'm showing you guys today is based off of a blog post I found uh, by Sewing is Half the Battle, and I reached out to them and they were generous enough to allow me to make this tutorial based off of, you know, my experience and their blog post to share with you guys. So, uh, all of their links are down below, go check them out, they've got a bunch of different walkthroughs and blog posts about how to make certain parts of cosplay, super beneficial. This was an awesome tutorial to follow. I'm going to put it in video format as well as my own experience and, and twists on it to share with you guys and make this cosplay, make these Hakama as, uh, as accurate as we can. So first things first, let's talk about what you're going to need for this build, uh, specifically the material that we're going to be using. I'm going to be using a 65% polyester, 35% cotton blend, kind of like a thicker broadcloth. This is it right here. Um, it's an excellent material for pleating, and now this is where we might be taking some liberties. They probably didn't have polyester back in the day, but this is going to be an excellent material for cosplay. It's going to hold up, it's going to pleat well, and it's going to look really nice and have that dark black uh, throughout the, the entire Hakama, and we're probably going to make the upper half with this as well uh, when we get to the top part in a different video. I purchased three and a half yards of this material. That's gonna be enough for me. I'm six foot, two inches tall, so base it off of yourself, but we'll get into measurements in a minute. Three and a half yards is basically gonna be plank. You know, that's gonna be exactly what you need. I got it at Joann's Fabrics, so if you guys have Joann's or a local fabric store, you can probably find something similar to this fabric um, over there that, you know, pick out what you want. But this is what I'm going with. If you guys want something a little bit different, maybe something a, a little bit like linen based to get that more almost historic texture look, then feel free, use whatever you want. This is what we're using here. These Hakama traditionally were made up of different panels. Uh, they're big rectangles essentially put together and, and then pleated and made into two separate leg pieces. Uh, for this type of Hakama, we're doing the split leg as opposed to like the dress style uh, with no split in the middle. Each pant leg is going to be made up of four different panels, so eight total, uh, and each one is going to be about 12 to 13 inches wide. The width is based off of how the looms were back in the day, so they only had so much space they could work with uh, width-wise, and they can make it as long as they needed to. Uh, for us, we're going to be doing about 12 to 13 inch panels, depending on your waist size. The pieces that we're going to be measuring are the panel length and width, as well as we're going to make a crotch gusset that's going to go in between your legs to kind of help the pleats stay together, help everything shore up in the middle. We're also going to be making two different belts, or himo, as they were called. And the last thing that we're making is a koshita, which is like the back cardboard bit, essentially the stiff part in the back to help uh, with some support around the waistline. We're going to be making that probably towards the end, but we will go ahead and get started on the measurements with the length of your pant leg first. Before we start cutting fabric, we're going to need to take some measurements. The first one that we're going to do is from your waist, about right here, right on that waistline, all the way down to your ankles. For me, that's about 44 inches uh, without seam. So everything that I'm writing now or I'm telling you now is going to be without seam allowance. We'll add that in later. You'll have to excuse my crude drawings here, but I wanted to go ahead and write down some stuff to show you kind of how I track my measurements. I especially wanted to show you how I wanted to cut the fabric out of the three and a half yards that I bought. So what you would think you would do, normally speaking, is fabric comes folded, so you would just cut it along the fold and open it up and you'd be able to get your eight pieces no problem. But what happens is you actually lose the ability to make the belt, the hemo, with a, the proper length because you want that really long belt which we will use later on. So I drew this really crude version of how the fabric would be. So imagine like three and a half yards of fabric. You're actually going to want to cut the panels just like this. One, two, three, four. All eight of your panels are going to be cut out like this and that's going to leave this strip at the top here 
to make our belts. So we're gonna have this really long strip of fabric. I ended up with a little bit left on the end, which we will make the, uh, the back piece with. That top part is going to be used for our belts. Um, if for some reason you can't do that or you need to cut that up for whatever other uses, you can always have a seam in your belts. I actually think I'm going to end up with a seam in my belt because it's a little bit longer than the fabric that I have. Totally fine. Uh, one seam's not a big deal, but you don't really want patchwork seams throughout. Uh, it makes it look a little bit janky, a little bit thrown together. So we want to try to have just one at most. And if you can just do no seam, even better. Next, I'm going to be using the sewing machine here to do all the work. Um, it is a singer. It doesn't matter. If you have a sewing machine, this will work, whatever. We're not doing anything crazy. Any sewing machine will be great. You could hand stitch this whole thing if you were a madman, but it's going to be a lot of work. Um, otherwise, I would recommend using just any generic sewing machine that you have with some black thread along with any, you know, kind of generic useful sewing tools that you might have. Pins, clips, measuring tape, things like that. I use a bit of uh, like chalk to mark fabric and stuff. So various sewing utensils that might come in handy uh, will be very useful on this build. Uh, other than that, I think it's pretty easy. We're mainly working with fabric uh, and yeah, pick some scissors or I actually have those rolling cutters somewhere around here. I'll show you guys in a little bit. Those are awesome. If you get some rolling cutters, uh, I don't know if there's an official name for it, but it makes cutting fabric super easy. Um, this is going to be our primary tool for this entire build. This is that tool I was talking about, by the way. It's like a roller cutter. Uh, it has a little blade guard, but it makes cutting uh, fabric super easy. So if you have one of these, awesome. If not, scissors will work just fine. Once you're finished cutting out your strips of fabric for the panels, each one should look roughly like this. Again, we're going to need eight of them, uh, and each of my panels has seam allowance on both ends, so half an inch on each end, or one inch total. Whenever I measured out my fabric, I just added an inch on the length and added an inch on the width, and then we made our, uh, our seams there. So cut out your panels, we need eight total, and you're actually going to go ahead after that and sew each set of panels together. So these are two panels sewn together just like so. I apologize for the harsh lighting right now. Um, it's very bright out. But you just need to sew one side. So we're going to need to double up all of these panels and you should have four just like this that are sewn together. I'm going to go ahead and measure and cut out the crotch gussets now. Uh, they are actually going to be the same length as your pant panels, your leg panels. So in my case, 45 inches long, uh, but they're only going to be half the bloom width. So if I did 13 inches, it's going to be six and a half inches wide. Uh, we're going to add seam allowance to that. So seven and a half inches wide, uh, but that's what we're going to cut out here. We need two of those total. I'm just using some chalk. You can get these at most craft stores to mark the fabric uh, and then a straight edge so I can make sure that I cut uh, my lines nice and straight. Nothing fancy about it. I'm sure you guys probably have a much fancier or nicer method than I do, but I'm pretty rudimentary when it comes to uh, supplies and utilities. I don't like spending tons of money on stuff I don't have to. And this is a pretty easy way to do it. Man, this thing is nice. All right, so we're going to save the rest of this. This is all the belt, all the humo fabric, super long. Toss that aside. This will basically be our uh, crotch gusset right here. Like I said, we need these to be seven and a half inches wide. That includes seams uh, because of our 13 inch loom. So I'm just marking seven and a half inches. I'm going to do my best to connect these lines and cut a nice straight uh, line down the middle. I think this is actually wider than, than the what 15 inches that I need. So we may have to do some uh, additional cuts in just a minute here. one and now we need 
do the same thing with this piece. Next, let's sew the crotch gusset together. Uh, we've got the two ends lined up, and I've got them clipped on either side. You can use pins or clips or whatever. We're just going to sew with our half inch seam allowance uh, along the short side, and that's it for now on this piece. With your remaining fabric, this really long piece of fabric that we have left after we cut out all eight of the leg panels and the two pieces for the crotch gusset, that's going to be the hemo. That's going to be the belts that we're using. Uh, now, the measurements for these belts are going to be essentially twice and four times your waist width. So my waist is about 30, 31 inches. That means one of my belts is going to be 60 inches long and the other one is going to be 120 inches long, uh, give or take. And if you want longer belts or shorter belts, you can adjust the size as needed. Now, uh, the way that we're going to do this is once your fabric is laid out, we're going to end up folding it in half so the two ends kind of meet in the middle and then in half one more time. So the width of these needs to be anywhere from eight inches to about six and a half inches wide. If you want a two inch belt, eight inches is what you'll cut. If you want a one and a half inch belt, which is what we're doing here, six and a half inches will be just fine. So we can do that triple fold to make the belt uh, at the end. Once we do that, we should have everything cut out except for the back support. That's an optional part. You don't have to have that. Uh, we will be doing it, but we're gonna be doing it later. So if you have extra fabric, that's what we'll be doing it. If you don't have extra fabric, then we might need to get a little bit more for that back piece. But this should be enough to actually make a hakama uh, if you don't need it, if you don't want it on there. So we'll get that going and then let's get to sewing some stuff together. Okay, the next step that we're going to do is go ahead and create those angled lines that you'll see on your hips. Uh, I went ahead and drew mine out. You're going to measure about a third of the way down from the top of the fabric. Uh, that's going to be the bottom point on the hip. And we're going to measure about four to five inches in. I did five because I'm a little bit bigger. So we're doing, for me, 14 and a half inches down, five inches in. We're gonna fold this and then stitch right along that line right here as close as you can, kind of make an invisible seam. Uh, you can do a double fold to make sure that there's no hard edge. You're going to make two on the left side and two on the right side, meaning we have four of these uh, stitched together pieces. Two of them are gonna have a left fold and two of them are gonna have a right fold. That way you can meet them front to back and they will create that V on both sides of your legs. Go ahead and get that done. And after you're done with that, you can actually stitch the leg panels together if you want. Um, we're going to kind of assume that that's how it, you're going to take care of it next, stitch the leg panels together. Before you do that, I would recommend finish all your seams on the inside, however you like to finish it. If you have a serger or if you just do like a cross stitch over that seam, we're gonna finish our seams and then put all the leg panels together. You have a finished seam down the middle and then one edge folded and stitched. And remember we're doing one for each side. So two of them should be on the left and then two of them should be on the right side. That way when you pair them up, uh, they all line up. And make sure you do it consistently so for me, I, I folded it over, so two on the left with the uh, the seam in the middle here facing you, and then two on the right with the seam facing you as well. If you flip your fabric around, you're gonna end up doing it backwards, which we want to avoid doing. We're gonna take another measurement here. Uh, it's going to be the rise of our pants. It's going to essentially tell us how far down we sew the left leg and the right leg together. Grab yourself your measuring tape, and essentially this is the way that it's going to go. Measure from your waistline in the front, around underneath your legs, to the waistline in the back. Um, I think mine is about 41 inches, but I'm gonna double check here. Just like this, we measure from one to the other. This is where I want my pants to sit. Then I'm ending it in the back here, 40 inches. So pretty darn close, 40 inches for me. And you want that to kind of have some length in between your legs, uh, some droop down, kind of between maybe your, the top of your crotch and your knee. A good spot in the middle there is, is, a, is a good sag that you want it to have. Uh, the hakama weren't very tight in the crotch area, so you want that to have some, some looseness along with the flowiness of the rest of the, of the pants. So uh, 40 inches is about where I'm going to go at. I might even make it a little bit longer just to have a little extra space in, in between the legs. So keep that measurement in mind as we move on to the next steps here. Now that we have the measurement around uh, for the crotch area, we're going to find the, the rise height 
and what we need to actually sew uh, our front, excuse me, our left and right legs together. That's what we're going to figure out now. So take your, the distance you measured, for me it was 42 inches, uh, that's what I ended up with. I added a little bit of extra room, 42 inches, and you're going to subtract the width of the crotch gusset. So I did 6.5 in this video. That'll leave us with 35 and a half inches. Divide that number by two, so I'm at 17.75 inches. And that is the distance that you're going to sew from the top around your waist down in front of, uh, I guess, where the crotch will start. So your left and right leg sew those together that distance. For me, it's 17.75 inches on the front and on the back. And then we'll, we will be able to add the crotch gusset in the middle and start pleating our pants. You're going to end up with this huge like tube of, of basically like a giant dress because we haven't pleated anything yet. But once we add the pleats in, it'll tighten up a bit and it will fit your body much better. All right, so we have sewn together the left side and right side, that 17 and three quarter inches that we talked about on both sides. So this is technically like the front or back and you'll see the split of the legs. Huge right now. When we plate it up, it definitely won't be this big. Uh, but first we have to do the crotch gusset. So we'll take that. You'll find the middle seam that we sewed earlier and you're going to place it so the correct side, like the outside, are together with the outside here. Put this right here. We're going to sew these two together all the way down and you're going to have a lot of excess. That is okay. We'll cut that off later. Repeat here. Once we've done this side, you'll repeat and pin this to this side, this one to this side, and so So now we'll have entire completed pants. They're going to be gigantic, but we'll fix that in just a minute. Okay. So, it is a new day, we're going to get back to this. You should have a giant pair of pants. This is what we're at right now. So if your pants look like this, if your hakama looks like this, you're in the right spot. Uh, don't worry about it because it's obviously way too big uh, as it is currently. When we add the pleats, which is the next step, that's going to shrink it down to be the correct size for you. Uh, and that's what we're going to work on right now. So we're going to take this and we're basically going to fold our pleats in over each other and it'll shrink that right up. To get the measurement for your pleats, you're going to figure out how wide you want the front and the back to be, where you want it to stop on your waist. So for me, it's about 14 inches, give or take. I might readjust that number, but let's, let's work with 14 inches for now across the front of my waist, and that's where that V is going to start. So from here to here, 14 inches or so. Divide that number in half, so 7 inches, and that's how we're going to fold our pleats. So if I'm doing three pleats on each side, meaning that once they're folded, that total fold width is going to be seven inches. And I'll show you an example of this, so hopefully it makes more sense on the fabric. But we do those three folds, and then that half is seven inches, three folds on the other side, seven inches. We have total width of 14. Now it's going to be some actual fitting pants uh, once we get the front done and the back afterwards. Let's start with the front, and I'll show you an example of what those folds look like. All right, so we've got our pleats folded on one side. As you can see, the top is about seven inches. It's kind of what we went with here. Uh, a line across the top that makes each one of these panels uh, this width like 2.3 inches give or take I'm not too worried about it being that exact but what I did want to show you is you want to fold from the outside in uh, so this is the center seam of the pants we folded one pleat here the next here and the next here and on this side they're gonna fold inwards too so always fold towards the center that way uh, they overlap nice and neat. You don't want to fold the other direction. So on the front and back, fold them toward the, towards the center, and then we are going to end up stitching across the top here to keep those pleats nice and still, uh, nice and in place. If you want, you can stitch the edge of the, uh, the pleats here, like a really close one on the edge. I'm just going to iron mine. I think it looks better without it, but you definitely can if you're having trouble or the fabric you're using is not staying pleated. You can do like a really close stitch on the edge here to kind of keep these nice and pinched together. But after these are ironed, I think they will stay just fine. Just a little interjection here, everybody. This is Dylan from the future. As I'm editing this video, I forgot to show you how I did the back pleats as they are different than the front. So we're going to do this and then we'll jump back into uh, how to make and finish the rest of the pants. Obviously you see I have this all completed. Uh, this is going to be different than the front. In the front we had our three panels and in the back here we have a two panel, which is traditional. Uh, you don't have to do this, but this is how we did it to make it as traditional as possible. Uh, you could just have three panels in the back as well. But for this one, one long panel on each side, meeting in the middle, 
over the top of one other panel. So we have two here and they all line up in the center and kind of overlap and they spread out as they go down. So these will be about the same width, I think this is about 12 to 14 inches as the front here, uh, but they do all overlap in the center and I have two panels here uh, that meet at the center seam and this is just where our pants connect together. Just wanted to show you that, make sure you knew how the back was done and how I did it. Like I said, you could do the three panels on the front the same way, or you can do it this way. I like this, it mixes it up a little bit and it is traditional. So keep that in mind as you're moving forward. All right, let's change gears and start working on the Koshiita, the little back support for the Hakama. Uh, this is going to be roughly what we're going to use. This is just some thick cardboard. I actually double layered it, so it's two pieces of cardboard, hot glue together. These are the dimensions, five inches on top, three, uh, three inches tall, seven inches on the bottom. You can make yours whatever size fits your back. This is kind of the standard size, so to speak, when you like Google it, honestly, this is what you'll find. This is what I'm doing as it's kind of the right size for me, um, and it'll, it'll just fit nicely for the costume that we're making. Once you have this, and you can make it out of any material that's sturdy enough to support your back, this is fine for me. Uh, people use foam or vinyl or other, you know, <laughs> tough materials. I don't know if you have like warbler or something you could do, um, anything really. But you're going to use some of the extra fabric we have and do two layers. This is two layers of fabric. Trace the outside here, give yourself some seam allowance, and then on the bottom edge you're going to make this gap at least an inch uh, because we're going to add to, uh, our, our hemo, our belt, on top of it. Once we're here, and like I said this is two layers, you're going to lay the belt across about an inch from the bottom. That ends up being right about here. So you can see this is the bottom lip, that's about an inch. And then you're going to mark the top here. Mark this, mark this, take this off, and you're going to sew from this line, the mark here, up, over, and down to this line. So this whole bottom half is gonna be open, but that is going to be sewn. That'll be the first step. We'll flip it inside out once we uh, get done with that to put this inside, and we're gonna end up stitching this back together. So when you do this, the hemo that you're using uh, for the back is going to be the shorter of the two. So the long one goes in front, short one goes in back. Let's get this done first and then we will move on to the next step. Alright, so we've turned the Koshiita inside out. We're going to next make these triangles that are on both sides of it. Uh, they're just little aesthetic pieces that we're adding to it. I've seen a, this done a bunch of different ways. This is the way that we're going to do it on ours. Um, if you have a different way, feel free to make it, you know, however suits your costume uh, or your hakama the best. This is what we're doing uh, for, for this tutorial. So essentially what this is, is it's a little triangle. It's about five inches by five inches by four inches across the back here. And we are going to essentially take this and put it right here on this side. I already did one so you can see what it's going to look like at the end. But the way that we're going to do this is you're going to take one of the long sides, you're going to fold it over about half an inch for your seam allowance. We're going to put that right here and then this is going to fold underneath and we're going to stitch these two together, just this top layer, not the bottom layer. And this stitching is going to be, it's going to be right here and you're going to stitch within the seam line. So not on the seam line because then it'll show up on the edge here. We're trying not to do that. You're going to stitch in the seam line. I'm going to set this up and show you how it's going to look. You're going to, have to turn this inside out to do it. Uh, but once it's all set up and stitched, unfolded, it will look just like this. From here, we're going to go ahead and take the obi, uh, and just as a reminder, this is the shorter of the two, and we are going to open this bad boy up, put it in here, and this is where this is going to sit, along with our uh, the rigid part. So we can actually put this in here too, close it up. Once everything is in there, uh, then we can actually use this uh, to stitch onto the top of the pants on the back where the uh, folds are, where the pleats are. This will end up covering uh, the top of the pleats and you'll have a nice sturdy back uh, support here. So that's what we'll do next. All right, so we have finished our 
back support piece. This is what it's gonna look like as you're done. Still have the raw edge in the bottom. Don't forget to put the actual support inside. That is important. Uh, but now I have my Hakama, this is the back. And I am going to go ahead and turn this so that the triangles are against the pleats. And we are going to stitch this top edge together. My back support is shorter than the edge of uh, the pants here. So I'm actually gonna use the very edge of my belt as the seam for the pants here. So this is going to stitch right there. Just line it up in the center, stitch it, and you flip it up, we'll be good here. You can iron these parts down if you want, or hand stitch them however you want. I also edge stitched these and the edge of the belt as well. So we wanna make sure that that's nice and tight uh, on the edge there, you don't see very much when we do this. So connect these and then we will move on to doing the belt in the front. Here we go. All stitched together. All right, final two steps of this project are going to be hemming the bottom and then adding the uh, front hemo onto uh, the, the front pleats, the pants, the front belt on the pleats. The way that we're going to do this, take the middle of your long belt, you're going to open it up, you're just going to stick the uh, rod edge pleats inside, close it down, and then edge stitch right along the edge across this entire thing, uh, and that'll be that, that'll be the front. And uh, once you do the hemming at the bottom, iron out your pleats and we'll be ready to try it on. All right, we did it. Pants are done. Kama is finished. Uh, looks pretty good. Pleats came out pretty good. I think I'm actually gonna starch this, make it nice and sharp. But um, I like how it turned out. We did the single, or I guess double pleat in the back here. Three on each side on front. And uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty good. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I hope this tutorial was helpful. It, uh, it was fun making this Hakama again. This is I think, the second one I made. Probably will make a bunch more. Uh, these are great for you know traditional Japanese ceremonies or whatever you're wanting to use it for. I'm using mine for cosplay. There's tons of characters that have these, so I'm sure I'll be making another one. But like I said, thanks again. Uh, I will be posting the next part of the Ichigo build coming up here pretty soon. We're going to be working on the kimono next, the shirt part of this costume. Thanks again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll make sure to answer all of those uh, in due time here. See you guys next time.